Okay, so now you might be saying, okay, Derek, I have my roll wire. How do I know how long to make my cut so that it can wrap around the tree? From what I've read, an 18 foot long piece when wrapped will end up coming out to a six foot circle across. So for the older trees that I'm gonna replace that fencing on, that's what I want is a six foot. So I'm gonna cut those out here roughly at 18 and that should give me what I want. Now, what I ended up doing since I'm here by myself and I'm trying to unroll this is I cheated and I put a stake in the ground to hold that fence in place and then now we'll roll it out and hopefully it'll work and i have my tape measure out there rated right at 18 so we're just gonna keep rolling this and right here is 18 feet right where i'm at Now, I've seen people cut this kind of fencing with multiple different tools. I've seen people use side cutters before. You could use a grinder and cut it. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I got myself a set of little bolt cutters. Not great big ones. You don't need anything too big for this. So we're just gonna try and cut this with bolt cutters. I at least wanna make sure that that tree that I took the fencing off of, if this rain's gonna keep going, I at least want to make sure that I get that tree refenced so that the deer don't get to it tonight and destroy it. So move my tape measure a little closer so I'm sure I 18 feet. Oh yeah. These little bolt cutters work perfect for this. That's it, we're all the way through. So now, if what I was told is true, when I undo this piece and curl it around, should be roughly a six feet across. So. Pull the stake back out, leave that there. I don't have it exact or anything, but we're roughly, let's see. Eight foot there. And about 13 on this side. So pretty much it's a little over five. Like I said, I don't have it exact yet. We'll get it there once we get it up here and we're wrapping it around the tree. So we're gonna get this thing hauled up there and we'll get it wrapped around this new tree. If you have multiple people, I could have went ahead and done all the zip tie in there and then came up here and did this, but I don't have multiple people today. It's just me. So I just grabbed it loose and we'll drag it up here. 
we'll wrap this out around the tree we'll get it zip tied together and then uh get some stakes and get it pounded into the ground so this is a tree this one is a macintosh definitely needs some trimming done to it it's another one of the reasons why i use the uh zip ties to tie it shut instead of using wire ties and stuff and actually tying it with the wire it's so much faster you just cut those zip ties off and i mean they're not that expensive so just replace the zip ties whenever you're ready to seal it back up so that the deer can't get in there and if you notice those stakes uh let me show you over here on this one So if you notice my stakes, one's right here on the side, one's directly across from it on the other side, but then my opening is over here, sort of straight forward, if you can see my zip ties. And the reason I do that is, that way, if I need to open this up, I cut these two zip ties, I can open it up, not have to mess with my stakes any in the ground, do what I need to around the tree, trim it, whatever. And then I can just grab the two pieces, pull it back together, seal it back up. And it just saves yourself a lot of work. So, okay, let's get set up here and get this uh, fence around this older tree. Like I said, it needs pruned really bad, but with the rain coming on and off and stuff like that today, I'm not really gonna take the time to do that. So we'll just uh, get the new fence back up on this one and then we'll call it a day. I also try and set it up so that all of my openings are on the same side. So right now I want all my openings down on you guys' side of the uh, trees. I don't want the openings up here on this side. And the reason for that is that way, if you're doing mulch or whatever, it's easier to just bring the tractor or the side by side or whatever and just come straight down this row. Now, since I have two different rows, I have this row here, and then I'm starting a new row down here that's gonna be coming back across, just waiting on the rest of these trees to show up that tree there in that row and all the one other ones that are going to be in that row their openings will face this way the upper row all the openings will face this way you bring the tractor down through you can get to the tree on either side it doesn't really matter and not have to move your equipment 100 million times to get each tree done separate Okay, now we're ready for some zip ties. That's definitely a lot better. It'll give the branches room to grow out here before the uh, deer can get to them again. So I got a little bit of bright sky here. So I'm gonna go grab that side by side real quick, get it up here, cause that's where all my tools are. I'll be right back. ahead and grabbed three zip ties for this one so it's a lot bigger of a tree a lot bigger of a circle and I'm gonna do some pulling on it so I wanted to go ahead and stick three on this one so we'll go ahead and get these put in place Want to 
top. One at the bottom. And like I said, since this one's a lot bigger circle and I know I'm gonna be doing some pulling on it, we're gonna go ahead and stick a third one right here in the middle. Snip all three of these off so we don't have that extra. The extra's not gonna hurt anything. You could leave that hanging out. I think it looks a little better if you have them trimmed off. Okay, now we're going to try and get this so it's centered on the tree. We give the tree as much space as we can. Right now, this side here I have probably one to two feet before the deer could actually reach the so that should be, that puts the tree about dead center. Now, if you're thinking about getting trees yourself, and by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and stick three of these orange stakes on this one. Just cause like I said, again, this is a lot bigger cage than I'm putting on here. I'd rather have three on and not need it than not have them on. So pretty much you're just gonna take the two sides and then I'm gonna put one on that upper side and then my opening is right here on this side. So I'm still able to get in and out of it without having to pull stakes. But what I was gonna say is if you're thinking about getting trees this was my first time ordering from Stark Brothers. And I don't know how well they're going to do. Maybe they'll do amazing. I'm hoping that they're going to do amazing. Maybe they'll do horrible and they'll all die. I don't know. But here's what I can tell you. So if you look at these trees I got from Tractor Supply a couple years ago were potted trees. So if you look at this tree, hopefully you can see that it leans pretty hard. I tried straightening it out. Didn't seem to really work. And we'll come over here and look at this one. This one's in there pretty good. And if you notice, it's not perfectly straight either. It leans a little bit downhill. Like I said, those were potted plants little bit different than if you're doing bare root trees if you look at these bare root this is the stark brothers this is the ben davis apple tree here and if you look at that one no matter which side you look at it from i was easily able to get that tree almost perfectly straight up and down so if that matters to you that's something to consider, whether your trees are straight or whether they're crooked. Some people don't care. If it produces fruit, honestly, I don't really care, but aesthetically, it'll look better if the tree's straight up and down versus if the tree's bent over and leaning and all of that. So, so far, as far as planting and trying to get the tree straight, I like the Stark Brother trees better than what I got from Tractor Supply. As far as growing goes, I guess we'll just... You guys aren't supposed to fall. And you're all covered in water.
Okay, we got you cleaned off again. It's definitely windy out here, along with the rain. So let's get this last stake in the ground. I'm happy with where that's at right there. We'll turn it that way. And that's it. So like I said, if you want roughly a six foot circle, 18 feet of fence, worked out just perfect. The old ones that I took off the other trees, well like the one that I removed off of this tree and moved to the new tree, that one was roughly between nine and 10 feet long when it was rolled out. So if you do 18, that's gonna give you a six. If you do the 9 to 10, that's going to give you about 3 feet a circle. So, all depends on what you need based off the trees that you're trying to plant. Now, that'll keep the deer so that they won't be able to get to that tree for a while. Like I said, now, hopefully on these ones, by the time the deer are able to start reaching the branches, the tree should be big enough. It shouldn't really matter. Like I said, this is those trees' third year in here. Going on their fourth, so... We'll see how things go. This one has always blossomed early and ends up getting hit with a late frost or a freak snowstorm. So far this year, it hasn't started blossoming yet. We've had some warm weather here the past week or so. Hopefully it doesn't start soon because I'm sure we're gonna get hit with at least one or two more freak snowstorms, but these uh, trees that came from Stark Brothers, they got here, I kept them about a week. And uh, if you wonder how you keep your bare root trees, if you go to Stark Brothers website, they actually, or Stark Brothers YouTube channel, either one, they actually have directions there on how to keep your bare root trees alive if you can't plant them right away. And actually in the emails, whenever you place your orders, it tells you the same thing. Click here, and if you're not able to plant your trees right away. So that's what I did, and it pretty much tells you just to keep the uh, the paper towel and stuff that's wrapped around the roots. It tells you just keep that damp and it shows you how to do it step by step so you're not getting it too wet and stuff like that. So make sure you watch those videos if you enter, if you order any trees. And even if you get your bare root trees from somebody other than Stark Brothers, just go on Stark Brothers website and look at some of the videos they have. They have amazing videos for helping you get stuff planted, what to do if you can't plant it right away, all that good stuff. Right now, I feel a lot better. So we'll do a real quick what we've added this year tour. This is a Ben Davis apple tree. It's an organic. I really wasn't needing organic, but that was the only way I could get that Ben Davis apple tree. That's a tree line from back in the 1800s. So, and then this one here that we just put the other fence around that we took off that tree up there. This is a Red Delicious. So, and then up on the hill, back over there. So that big bush right there, it's a combination of quince and black raspberries. Not blackberries, black raspberries. I have black raspberries growing in there and quince both growing in there. Those are, well, the quince probably isn't wild, but the black raspberries are wild. So I try not to pull those out, but just past those on that hill across there, there's two pear trees and two peach trees that we planted. And later on here, once we get the other trees and stuff like that, we'll actually do a tour and show you everything. I just wanted to show you those two apples since we're right here with them. But uh, once we get, I have two more apples that I had ordered. I did just get an email this morning though from uh, Stark Brothers letting me know that they sold out of the one that I had ordered, the Golden Delicious. So I'm gonna have to get back on their website and figure out what I'm putting to go with the Northern Spy that's on its way. So if there's anything I can say that I haven't liked so far about Stark Brothers would probably be that right there, that email that they sent me this morning. So 
I know I've seen emails from them pushing the Golden Delicious Apple. Apparently a lot of people bought the Golden Delicious Apple. My issue with it is, and th that, those emails were just this week. My issue with that is, I ordered my Golden Delicious last week, so I shouldn't have got an email this week telling me you're sold out whenever you all week long push the Golden Delicious Apple. Maybe when I ordered mine last week, mine should have been set aside. Like this one's sold, we can't sell it to anybody else because it's already sold. And then I wouldn't be the one who got shorted when I ordered mine last week. But I don't know. Maybe it's just how their ordering system works. But if I can say that's the only thing so far that I found that I don't like about Stark Brothers. We'll see how these trees grow. Maybe there will be more stuff later on. But so far, I'm happy with my experience. They showed up right when they told me they were going to show up. And like I said, I ordered these trees back in February and they held them at their warehouse until it was time for them to send them. The weather was good enough that I could get them in the ground. So sort of worked out perfect. I'm happy with my experience other than the fact, like I said, that email this morning that I got about the Golden Delicious Apple. Wasn't crazy about that, but okay. Hey, hope you've enjoyed this and uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you would on your way out and we'll catch you on the next episode. All right, have a good day.